among all these brethren that would rise from the dead. Amen? Then, 50 days after that, there was the day of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. Amen? This was when the two sheaves of bread, of loaves of bread, were offered to the Lord. Amen? They would wave it before the Lord. Why? Because it was on the day of Pentecost when God opened the door and said, Look, not only the Jew the Gentile also. Wave them both before me. Grace is sufficient for all of them. Amen? But then there's last three feasts that have not been fulfilled that will be fulfilled on his second coming. The last three feasts are the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Trumpets, Atonement, and Tabernacles. Well, I was confused because I said, God, Jesus, if you came the first time to atone my sin, why is the Day of Atonement over at the end when you come the second time? Because the process of atonement required two goats. The first goat was to be sacrificed, and that belonged to the Lord, to God, to Yahweh. And that blood was brought into the sanctuary, and in there he made atonement for the people in the presence of God. But then it says, and those, that, was, that was to make atonement for the sins of the people in the presence of God. But then the high priest came back out, and there was another goat waiting for him that the Lord says, the Bible says, that did not belong to God. Yes. That goat was not the Lord. That's why they cast lots to see which one belonged to God, and therefore the other one didn't. And on that goat, the high priest would lay his hands on that goat and transfer all the sins of the people to that goat. And then they would take that goat out into the wilderness. One man was appointed to take the goat out into the wilderness. And there he would carry away all the sins of the people. Amen. The thing is that Christ came. John tells us that's the goat. That's the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He's the one. And you know what's so sad was that the goat that belonged to God had to be killed and the other one got to live. Well, Jesus Christ got to be killed because he belonged to God. So they killed him. He took the blood and made atonement in the presence of God. That's why you can come in to his presence because he went into the tabernacle, into the one in heaven, right there before the Lord, and there he made atonement for but we're waiting for his second coming so that the pro full process of atonement would be completed. See, we think that now our sins have been washed away and never to be remembered anymore. The sins are still recorded right there in heaven. The high priest took it in there and is waiting. We're waiting for him to come back out. And when he comes back out, the Azazel, Satan himself, Lucifer, that old serpent, the one that got to live and didn't die, that one in, in Revelation chapter it tells you that the angel came and bound that old serpent amen that old Azazel and there the Lord transferred all the sins that he had caused men to fall with and was carried away into an isolated place amen and taken to hell with him all of our sins amen Christ the weight of the world the sins of the world was placed on Christ to make atonement for us in the holy place but when he comes back again and the enemy is finally defeated, all of those sins will be transferred onto Satan. And the one who caused men to fall will be carried in those sins away with him. Amen? Your sins will be carried away forever. But it's beautiful how Christ makes it there and says, look at now grace is available to you. Now tomorrow we're going to cover the fish gate and the old gate and the valley gate. And we're not going to condense them all to fit it in these three days, but I just want to give you a quick preview, and then we're going to close out for tonight, so you guys can go to work, amen, those of you that work, and those of you that don't, so that you can stay prayerful, amen, amen. Nehemiah chapter 3, I hope this was some good eating, now this is the struggle, saints, this is the struggle, especially when you preach to ministers and pastors, when you talk to this. How many gates were there? And how many does Nehemiah mention that needed repair? Ten. We've only gone down. One minister said, oh, I wasted my time. I already know about that. And it broke my heart when I heard that. And they never came back. Because 
most of us just stay stuck at the one gate. There's nine more gates in the process of reconciliation. Amen? There's nine more gates that God was trying to let you know about that needed repair. To think that we know all because of the first gate that you went through. Oh, I know about redemption. I know about, you know, I know about forgiving sins. God is like, no, let's go rebuild all of them. Not just that one. That's why as many times there's no spiritual growth because all we do is get in through the sheep gate. But we don't teach them the rest of them. Amen. Now, Nehemiah chapter 3. Look at this. The fish gate, verse 3, was rebuilt by the sons of Hasena. They laid his beams and put his doors and bolts and bars in place. The fish gate was rebuilt by who? The sons of Hasena. You know what Hasena means in Hebrew? Hasena means thorns, thorny, pricks. Amen. The sons of thorns were, re, were the ones that God used to rebuild the fish gate. Now, if, we, if these were the sons of Hasena, what relationship do they have with one another? If you and I, if my brother right here and I have the same father, what does that make him and me? That makes me brothers. The brethren were supposed to be used to rebuild the fish gate. I told you that Jesus came to verify, to validate every single one of these gates and to fulfill them. So what he does in Matthew chapter 4, let's go to Matthew chapter 4. What gate is it? The fish gate. And we're going to read this and we're going to go. Verse 18. Who repaired the fish gate? They were what? And they, between each other, what was their relationship? They were brothers. Brothers were used to repair the fish gate. The brothers who were born to thorns. Jesus, in verse 18 in chapter 4, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two what? Oh, he saw two brothers. It just so happens by coincidence, right? That he went to the Sea of Galilee on a mission to go find himself two brothers. His name was Simon, called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were... Who better to build a fish gate than two brothers who know how to... And so he repaired and it says... Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other, two other what? Two other brothers. And he, what happened here? And it says, they were in the boat with their father Zebedee, they were preparing to cast their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left their boats and their father and followed him. Jesus went on a mission to go get the help he needed to repair the fish gate because the sheep gate was repaired by the high priest, but the fish gate was repaired by the brethren. And so he went and found himself two brothers who were fishermen and then two more brothers who were fishermen and said, I have an assignment for you. You're going to help me repair the fish gate because I need you to do it. I'm repairing the sheep gate, and you will repair the fish gate, and tomorrow you will see how through three and a half years of ministry, Jesus Christ was showing them how to repair the fish gate. Amen? So we're going to dig into the scriptures and see how Jesus Christ was going to use them to repair the fish gate. Holy Father, we bless you. We glorify your awesome name. There is no other God but you. We came out, Father God, because today and the next two days, we want to, Lord God, allow you to begin to edify our understanding, to, to ele elevate our understanding of this awesome God that we serve. We want to know what the whole game plan is. We want to be in the same plan with you. We want to be on the same accord. We want to be on the same thought process. We want to do what you say for us to do and you have laid it out right here. Father God, on these Nehemiah's gates, you taught us how to go and win humanity 
back to you, how we would be reconciled back to you, how tomorrow you will use the fish gate, the old gate, and the valley gate, Father God, to get us to the gate of inspection. Father, so many times we're waiting for people to prophesy what our destiny, what the goal, what the plan is, Father, and you laid it out right there in Nehemiah, and we are here to learn what that is. We're not too prideful to say we already know it. We're not too arrogant to say I know all of Scripture. No, Daddy, we come with our hearts open, our minds available for you to fill it, for you to rearrange it, for you to elevate it, for you to illuminate it with your revelation in your word. So we will be back here tomorrow father god as a sign that i am humbled enough to be here before you so that you can show me thank you for the grace that you have bestowed upon me help me to walk in it and not fulfill the lust of the flesh so that i can dwell in your presence daddy until you return in jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah what a mighty god we serve Tomorrow, invite someone, amen, drag them out here, bribe them, tell them you're going to take them to Denny's afterwards, amen. We will be going down the fish gate, the old gate, and the valley gate, amen. amen. Praise God. Come Praise on, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, sister. Hey, sister, God bless you.